my name is Natalie Pullen. I'm the maths lead here at Northern Parade Infant and Junior School. We're a large four form entry school in Portsmouth. What we notice about our children is when they join us from foundation stage, they have very little experience of maths in sort of everyday circumstances. So they don't really have those basic fundamentals that are going to help them learn. We started using Numicon back in 2014. It's a fantastic resource. What we find with our pupils is that it gives them the opportunity to experience maths. It gives them the opportunity to talk about the maths they are learning. This supports all our children. It's just a really fantastic resource. So during lockdown, around 25% of our pupils were in school. Um, we focused on getting uh, most of our vulnerable pupils in, uh, as well as our year R and year sixes to try and sort of reduce that gap when we come, came back in September. Nearly all of the, our pupils accessed Google Classroom. We had a live lesson once a week for maths, and this was then supplemented by tasks on my maths. Since we've ran to, returned to school in September, um, pupils have had an hour of maths every day. That is from year one up to year six. We're really keen to get the gaps closed, but also without compromising our pupil and staff wellbeing. Um, we started the year with a week of growth mindset math, so really focusing on um, investigations, getting children talking again and getting them positive and feeling excited about a year of math learning. We introduced technical mathematical vocabulary from, from day dot really and it allows them to explain their thinking a lot more clearly. One of the biggest things we've noticed in our pupils since the sort of six months break is a loss of mathematical vocabulary. So this has been a big sort of focus point for us since September. We've begun our year by gap closing. Um, so in the junior school, we've been doing some very low stakes assessments with the pupils, analysing this and then teaching to close those gaps. However, we're still taking a very soft approach in year one. The, the classrooms are set up like a year our classroom would be. Uh, during the math lessons, they'll have a teacher guided task, um, a TA guided task and then independent application. Uh, the children are absolutely loving it, they're very confident and our teachers are really enjoying the opportunity as well. In year two we've just gone in with our normal curriculum but our year two teachers are planning um, to close gaps using the year one Numicon guides. So the introduction of the online teacher guides has been uh, an amazing resource for us. It's just made it so much easier for staff to access the previous year's learning um, in, to in order us to plan successfully for our children. Normally as a school we're quite resource heavy, we, have, we like to use resources in our classrooms, we like the children to have access to resources. With Covid we haven't been able to have as many shared resources and we have to be a lot more mindful of what the children are using. So we have created individual maths packs, we have collated all of our resources across the school to make sure that all children have enough resources to enable them to learn. It has made us have to rethink how we deliver our lessons. So our children, our teachers are sort of thinking more about using Numicon online and actually how we are sharing representations on the screen in order to support learning and new concepts. At the moment, our pupils are sat in rows facing the front. It's not how we would choose really to have our children. We like to have them sat and able to talk and like we said, have those conversations around maths. It's really important. So it's, a, it's an unusual way for a lot of them to be working. Um, but, you know, they're extremely resilient and we're also looking at new ways of working as a team and new ways of respectfully discussing mathematical ideas. Today's lesson was taken from uh, the Numicon uh, Big Ideas Intervention Programme. It's a, year, it's a sort of year five content, so it's perfect for gap closing with year six children. Previously, the children would have done uh, multiplying and dividing by 10, 100, 1000 in year five from calculating seven. Our diagnostic assessments have shown that around 60% of our pupils have a gap in this area or just weren't able to apply it. Previously to the lesson, we have recapped place value, we've recapped decimal place value and really deepened the children's understanding of decimal place value and rounding. And we looked only today at whole numbers, so really choosing those numbers to make sure the children didn't experience decimals. Um, but our next lessons will obviously bring decimals into it. So we've got some extra resources out today. The children have got deans in their math pack, so we're able to use the deans in there. I did give them additional resources today of a couple of Numicon shapes, just so they could get used to moving those shapes across the place value grid. So the lesson today I was really pleased with. I feel like the children really, really got to grips with it. Um, it may have been a little bit easy for some of them, but actually I think it's a really important skill to practice and consolidate, ready to move on to our next piece of learning. 
we came up with some really amazing generalizations about what happens when you multiply and divide a whole number by 10, 100 or 1000. Um, we attacked the dreaded just at a zero. Um, I didn't really want to talk about decimals today, um, but that would have been a point we'd have, would have had to have introduced them. Luckily for me, one of my children was quite comfortable discussing this and pointing this out to, to some brother children, which was really useful. And again, it's just showing how our children are getting used to that talking, again, that confidence in mathematics. Um, they came up with some wonderful generalizations about what happens. Uh, so one of our children had a really lovely idea about how uh, when you multiply a number by 10, it will always be an even number, divisible by 5, 10, you know, until another child pointed out actually, you know, if you think back about decimals, then that changes it again. So it's really good to get the uh, children's ideas out. And, you know, what I really hope in my classroom is that those children aren't afraid of making those mistakes and actually are able to have those conversations and challenge each other in a in a um, secure way. In terms of tomorrow's lesson, we're going to be applying this to conversions. Uh, again, just saying with whole numbers. Um, we had a few problems uh, in the last few weeks where we've had to look at conversions as part of the problem, so two-step problems, and um, the children have struggled a bit with this skill. So it'll be really good to apply that learning to a context tomorrow. And then after tomorrow, we're going to decide as a team whether we want to then move on to multiplication using a formal written method as a recap, or whether we then want to do the same skill but look at decimals, so multiplying decimals by 10, 100 and thousands and again applying that to conversions. That's a discussion we'll have tomorrow after we've all sort of taught the next lesson and had decided, right, okay, what are the children ready for? Where do we want to take them next?